cool. Hey guys, Devin here, and this is my Anycubic Colossal 3D printer. You may have seen my review on this in the past, and to this day, it still remains my favorite 3D printer in that $200 range. It's reliable, it prints nicely, I can't complain much. Although, there is one minor inconvenience. The way you navigate the menu on this printer is with this little tuning knob, and for some reason, it's hypersensitive to the point where it's hard to select certain things on the menu or to set it to a very specific temperature because it just moves so quickly. It's a minor inconvenience, and I could live with these things, but why would I? I can fix it, I have a 3D printer. So today we're gonna print a solution. We're gonna print a better knob for controlling my 3D printer back here. One way to get more control out of the knob would simply be to make it bigger. If you've got a larger circle, it's easier to make really small adjustments, but that would look kind of silly. It might cover up the screen. It's just not the best way to do things. Another option is to use gear trains. Now I'm not the guy to give you an in-depth explanation of how gears work, but in a nutshell, if you have gear one, that's half the size of gear two, you have to turn gear one twice in order to get gear two to do one revolution. So you're basically taking that rotation and slowing it down. So with that principle, I can make a knob here that lets me slowly turn the dial a little easier. Now, sometimes the sensitive knob is nice. I can very quickly go from zero to 200 degrees when I'm setting the nozzle temperature and things like that. It's just getting the final temperature that's tough. So I want my solution to allow both that coarse tuning and the fine tuning. So I think I'm gonna have two knobs to let me do both of those things and gears are gonna make that possible. So let me go ahead and show you how I do it. I'll start this project the way I often do and that's by measuring all the parts that are relevant to my design. So of course I wanna know the diameter and length of this knob, that way my new creation fits on perfectly. I'll also measure this LCD screen, which I can use as a reference to the scale of this photograph that I'm gonna take of the unit head on. Here we are in Illustrator where I'll dim this image, and then on top of that, I'm gonna create a rectangle with the measurements of that LCD screen. That way I can resize this photo so that it's perfectly to scale. I'll also draw in a circle for this hole here, and then a smaller one for the metal part of the knob. Now I'm gonna head over to GearGenerator.com, which has this very useful tool for very easily creating some gear sets. I don't really know what all of these settings do, but I'm just gonna play around with this until I have two gears that are the appropriate size. All right, these look good, and conveniently enough, there's a button right on the website so you can download the SVG file of these gears. I can open that file in Illustrator, and just like that, I've got vector files for my gears. I'll bring that over into this file, and then I can scale everything to the appropriate size. All right, that's about it. I've got the gears I need, and they're at the correct size. But one other thing I wanna do is simplify these vectors. If I select them here, you can see there's a ton of control points. So I'll use this simplify command to drastically reduce the number of points without really changing the shape too much. There we go. Now I'll just go ahead and export this image as a JPEG, which I can reference in Fusion. And I'll also export the lines of those gears as a DXF file. I'll just modify the units here and make sure that one inch equals one unit because that's how things are imported into Fusion 360. Here in Fusion, I'll just hit insert and bring in that DXF we just created onto this right plane. I'll move that near the origin just for convenience. And then I'm gonna to go to insert again and attach a canvas where I can bring in the JPEG that I exported from Illustrator. This won't come into scale, but I can easily scale it up until it matches that DXF that I brought in. All right, we've got our references, so we can start building this thing. I'll start by extruding this larger gear three millimeters and then I'll extrude the smaller gear by 3.5, that way it's a little bit taller. Now let's put some holes through these gears. So for this large one, I'm gonna set the diameter of the circle to 5.8 millimeters so that it can fit onto that metal knob that we're working with. For this smaller one, I'm gonna make my own axle, but let's just set that to 4.5 so that it's large enough to be nice and sturdy. Now I can use the extrude function, select both those circles, and cut all the way through both of my gears. Now I'm gonna start a sketch on top of this smaller gear. First, I'll draw the circle for my tuning knob, and next to that, I also wanna draw the shape of the shaft for the second gear to make sure that they don't intersect each other. 
I'll draw these horizontal lines from the center of each circle to the edge. That way I can reference these two points and create a 0.5 millimeter tolerance in between the two parts. Now I'm going to extrude this circle for the tuning knob 4 millimeters, and that's going to automatically join to that small gear. I'll also extrude this shaft here and make it just a little bit taller than that tuning dial. We'll use this offset command here and just make it 0.5 millimeters taller. Now let's go ahead and cut some notches through this tuning knob so that it has some grip. So I'll start by drawing this little rectangle and extrude cutting a slot through the side of my dial. Then I can go to create and select circular pattern where I can use the feature option, select that cut I just made, and then select this circle for the axis. I'll increase the quantity until it looks good, and then we'll go ahead and confirm it. There we go, now we've got notches all along that dial. Actually, I'll take us back a few steps here on the timeline, and I'm gonna add some chamfers to this dial first, because that's gonna make it look a little nicer. We'll put that one millimeter chamfer, and then step forward again, and you can see the dial looks much better. I'll go back into this feature as well and update the axis since I got rid of that. And now we're good on that. So how about we start working on something to encase these gears. We don't want them to be exposed, so I'm going to draw these circles that are larger than the gears themselves. And I'll actually create these construction lines and make sure that I have exactly one millimeter of tolerance between this circle and the gears. Next, I'm going to draw some straight lines to connect these two circles. And if I select the line and the circle, I can apply this tangent constraint to create a nice smooth transition between the two. We'll do that down here as well, and now we've got this nice little pear shape that contains both of the gears. Now I'll use the offset tool and offset all these lines by 1.4 millimeters to create the thickness for this shell. I'll select the parts of that wall, and I'll extrude it up to the tuning knob with a little bit of offset to give it some tolerance. I'll also do a tiny 0.2 millimeter extrude in the opposite direction to give some tolerance on that side as well. Now I'll start a sketch on the bottom of that wall and I'll hit P to use the project tool to create a perfect outline matching that wall. I'll extrude that downward and join it with the wall so that we now have a bottom to this case. Let's create a top to this as well. So once again, I'll project that outer outline and I'll also create these circles that way the top doesn't interfere with the gears. Now I'll extrude that just a bit taller than the tuning dial, and I'll also throw in some tiny 0.6 millimeter fillets right here. Okay, we're gonna do one more similar sketch on top of that extrusion, and that's gonna create this top wall which holds the tuning dial in place. I'm also gonna have to extrude this shaft a bit further, that way it's higher than the top of this surface. On top of this shaft, I'm gonna extrude another cylinder, which is gonna become the main knob. Let's extrude that 12 millimeters, and then we're going to chamfer the edges and cut in notches just like we did with the tuning dial. Okay, we've pretty much got the main form of our little gearbox here, but I just need to break this up in a way that it's easy to print and assemble. I'm going to do a quick cross-section analysis here to see what we're working with. So right away I can see that this main gear is pretty much trapped inside of the body. So I'm going to have to split this up into two parts. I'll start a sketch on the bottom of the knob here and I'll change my visual style so that I can see those hidden edges. I'll make a circle that matches the outer diameter of that shaft, and then I'll draw another circle that is a small offset from there. Let's extrude that upward into the knob and cut away this little circular section. From there, we'll do another sketch that matches that larger circle and do a small extrude cut to separate these two parts. Now you can see we've got two bodies here instead of one, and we just need a way to easily connect them together. I could make it a push fit, but I really love this thread feature that Fusion has built in. So we're gonna make the two parts screw together. I'll create this thread and I'll offset it, that way it's just on the inside of that knob. And I'll use the same tool on this inner cylinder that we cut out of the dial. We'll make sure all the settings are the same and hit OK. We can also use the press pull feature to slightly modify the thread here and give it a little more tolerance. That way it's really nice and easy to screw the two together. We'll also make things a little bit easier by revolve cutting out this little triangle section from the top of the thread, which basically creates a chamfer so the two parts come together nice and easy. Okay, so that dial is dealt with, but we've also got this large body part that also needs to be split up. 
Let's start by separating the bottom here so that we can slip things in through there. I'll project this outline and offset it by 0.15 millimeters, and then I'll cut that sliver away to basically separate that bottom from the rest of the body. So now we've got this separate bottom panel, but we just need something for it to rest against when we push it into place. So I'm gonna create some more little sections that surround the gears here, and those are basically little tabs that the bottom can push against. Cool, so from here we can just do a few details. I'll throw my logo on the top, of course. I also created this little tongue here, which I want to rest against the side of the metal of the printer to keep the body from moving with the dial. Oh, and very importantly, I nearly forgot this little axis going through the center of my tuning knob. So that's gonna hold things into place as well. I'll do a couple final touches and then export all the parts as individual STL files. And I'm gonna print them out on another Anycubic printer, this i3 Mega. This printer was almost ready to go out of the box and it only takes three touches to get things printing. You can see this i3 Mega prints rather quickly and it's also quieter than most of my printers. Here are half the parts printed out in white and they look really good apart from some stringing because my retraction settings were off. Here's the body I printed separately in black and this is the only part that actually needs a bit of support material, but that came out relatively easily. I started assembling my parts and realized pretty quickly that I messed up and I didn't split it up enough to actually get the tuning knob in there. So for now, I'll just break this apart so that I can get the tuning gear in there and test things out. The gears fit together perfectly and the model fits onto the metal knob, although the hole wasn't quite deep enough to go flush against my printer. So I'll have to change that as well. The little tab on the bottom panel here also wasn't quite enough to keep everything from wiggling. So I'll probably end up just having to use an adhesive to stick this to the printer. So I noted the flaws in my model and made some slight adjustments in Fusion. And here is my second iteration. You can see I eliminated that stringiness between parts by increasing my retraction from 1.5 to four millimeters. So here are the new parts and you can see I split the model up just a little bit more. That way I can actually assemble this thing without breaking anything. And everything went together really nicely. The entire gearbox fits really snugly onto the metal part of the dial and everything seems to work well. Things are still a little wobbly though, so I'm gonna use some VHB tape on this bottom panel to really stick it onto the printer. I'm also gonna glue the two halves of my body together to make it really nice and sturdy. After letting that glue dry, here you can see the knob in action. As you can see, that fine tuning dial is really doing its job. And finally, I can adjust the nozzle temperature one degree at a time. One thing that's a little awkward about this design is that the two dials turn in opposite directions, but you get used to that really quickly, and I didn't think it was worth adding a third gear in between the two. Also, I realized my CR10 has the same kind of metal knob, so I can use my model on there as well. The only thing is the knob doesn't stick out quite as far, so the quick fix is to just stick a tiny bit of filament in there and then pop it on top. I'll throw some VHB tape on there once again, stick it into place, and there we go. We've got a knob for my CR10s as well. It's definitely not as necessary for this printer because it's not as sensitive, but it's still a nice little addition. All right guys, there you have it. Another example of how 3D printing can provide a relatively quick solution to a very minor inconvenience. I think my solution turned out pretty nicely, but I know there's a lot of smart folks out there who might have suggestions for what I could do better. So if you do, let me know in the comments. I love educating, but I also love to learn from you guys. Lastly, I wanna thank Anycubic for sending me their i3 Mega 3D printer. This was my first time using it, but as you saw, it was quick, quiet, and easy to use. So I'm a fan so far. This wasn't necessarily a review of this printer, but it did a great job. So if you're interested, I have links in the description where you can buy it on Amazon or Gearbest. People have been referring to this as a smaller, cheaper CR10 alternative, which is obviously high praise. And I would also keep an eye out for the upcoming Anycubic Formax 3D printer, which has the same rugged steel construction as this i3 Mega, but it's also got a larger build volume, so that's a promising one as well.
Anyways, that's it for now. I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.